This is lesson number five in the series of lessons that accompanies the book How to Play the Three String Cigar Box Guitar. And in this lesson, we're going to be talking about fretting notes for a clean sound. Many times, beginning guitar players think, I can't do this. <laughs> it's impossible to make these chords or to get a clean sound. I always get like a, a muted sound or buzzing. Uh, but I, I'm here to tell you, you can do this. And I'm going to give you a few tips to help you along. And once you apply some of these techniques for fretting, then after a little while, you'll probably wonder, well, why did I ever think that was so hard? Okay, so I'm going to give you several tips to, to help out with the fretting. We're going to start on page 30 of the book, and you'll see a couple of pictures there, figure 1-11 and 1-12, typical hand positions for fretting notes. Now, let's try fretting some individual notes and combinations of notes. So I give you a few tips, starting on page 31 and then page 32. Get up on the tips of your fingers. If I were to fret, say, the fifth fret of the third string, and I were just a little bit lazy in doing that, and not up on the tip of my fingers, well, that third string sounds pretty good. But the second string, well, <laughs> this is a little bit exaggerated, I know. Uh, this is more critical, really, for six string guitars where the string spacing is closer, or band shows, say, where the string spacing is close. But I need to get off of that second string. So getting up on the tip of your finger, now... I know that doesn't go well because we're tuned to open G. That sounds good. Okay. But if I were to fret, say, the seventh fret... Well, the third string and the second string sound the same, and they both sound pretty good. So that's tip number one. Get up on the tip of your finger so you don't lay down or lean over onto another string to mute it. Tip number two is get as close to the fret as possible. So let's say I'm fretting the second string here at the fifth fret. Well, that sounds pretty good. If I get back a ways, almost back to the fourth fret here, you can see I get a little bit of buzzing in there because that string is free to move behind the fret. But if I can get up as close as possible to the fret, I get a much cleaner sound. You don't want to get over the fret or fret right, like right on top of it because now you start to get some muting because part of your finger is on the, the top side. So get up close to the fret with your finger. Tip number three is use enough pressure. If I were just touching the string, well, that's no good. I'm not even pushing it down far enough to get on the fingerboard. Use a little more pressure. In fact, if I just start out with a light pressure, and then all of a sudden you start to hear a nice sound. So I'm using enough pressure. You don't want to use too much pressure. Hear how that is? Even without pushing it to the side, if I use too much pressure, I can bend that note off pitch. So use enough pressure to get a clean sound, but no more than that. For the sake of the sound, but and also for the sake of your left hand, using too much pressure and you know, like a death grip, you know, or squeezing is, is going to tire out your hand quickly. So now, tip number four, practice moving between chords. Not only is it important for the chord to sound good, but you need to get to the next chord in time so that you don't interrupt the, the rhythm of the song, and that chord needs to sound good. Let's say... So I've got a... That pretty chord there. What is that? Well, if the, if the strings are tuned 1-5-1, one, the, and I'm barring across the three of them at the fifth fret. This is one, two, oh, flat at three. So I've got a, a minor chord here. 
If I were to try and reach up to one, two, three, four frets higher, now this is a little bit more difficult, but it can be done. So because of the stretch involved here, I can't get right up behind that fret, but I get as, as close as I can. Of course, moving it back down, so I'm get a nice clean sound there. What happens if I do this? No. So you go back and forth. What is this chord? Well, we've got an open G, A, B, C. So this is a C, C minor, because I've got the flat third. And then I go up to, say, a D major. So here's the exercise. Go back down, go back up. Good exercise in fretted chords. Each time you're you're training your hand to exert the right amount of pressure to be in, your fingers to be in the right place. Plus, you're moving to that chord quick enough so you can use it in a song. And then up to the D. Once you get so that you can make a nice clean sound and change chords, then get out the metronome with a click, click, Click. You may have to start pretty slow, which is fine, perfectly fine, but insist that you get to the new chord in time and that it sounds good. If you can't do that with the current metronome setting, back off a little bit. Go as slow as possible so that you can do it. So if I go one, two, three, four, maybe I need to go that slow. If I can get a little faster. And so use that metronome, bump the speed up a little bit as you go, until you finally get to uh, the tempo in, that you would want to play a song in. Okay, the, the uh, fifth tip is think about the string height and the action. And you're playing in what you typically play. Now, if you've got a really high action, it's going to be hard to, to uh, get good intonation. And you probably you're going to be mainly playing slide. But if you're going to be doing a lot of fretting of notes, and maybe some slide too, then you need to find a compromise. Lower that action. How do you do that? Well, you can take a, a nut file and file these guys down a little bit so the strings are lower. I usually stick a quarter right, right here underneath the third string at the at the nut and you can also uh, lower the action with the saddles the bridge saddles so you get a nice compromise in string height the higher the strings of course the harder it's going to be to fret them and the more it's going to throw the intonation off all right so those are a few tips on practicing for a clean sound do the exercise of going between chords in time so you're there at the right time and I think after a little while you'll find that fretting notes and even full chords all three strings for a clean sound not going to be that difficult